Hello. So today I'm going to talk briefly about um, a book about sport in this series of books about sporting literature. Today's book is called The Fight by Norman Mailer. Okay, first of all I'm going to show you the beauty of this book. I've got three copies of it and I've always loved it because, partly because the jackets of the book are so great, and so lovely. So there's a recent one, another one, and the one I originally read probably 30 odd years ago, old Penguin Classics editions, and they're all lovely books in their own right. Okay, what's this book about? So, in 1974, to be exact, 30th of October 1974, there was a fight that's become famously known as the Rumble in the Jungle, fought between Muhammad Ali and George Foreman. At the time, in the early and mid-70s, Muhammad Ali was one of the most famous people in the world. If you were growing up then, you, 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 know, you couldn't avoid him. He's possibly the most well-known person globally in the 1970s, I suspect. The particular fight was watched by 60,000 people in the stadium and it had a global audience of one billion, global TV audience, which at the time was the biggest ever audience for a live event. It shows the magnitude of this fight. The fight took place in, a, in Africa, in a town called Kinshasa in Zaire. Um, and the book, The Fight, was written by Norman Mailer, published in 1975, and is uh, his sort of documentary account of the fight. Now, if you know Norman Mailer, he's, he, he was a prolific author in sort of the second half of the 20th century, he wrote lots of books. He wasn't scared of, he wasn't shy of talking about himself. Um, he sort of came across as a, his, his sort of style, this sort of macho style. But unlike, say, someone like Hemingway, who might say was an American kind of tough guy writer, Hemingway famously wrote in short, terse sentences and got to the point. Mailer quite often over, you know, you, you could argue he overwrote sometimes. He he would say, what, I can, why not write four or five sentences? One might do, but let's write four or five anyway. Okay, so his writing is quite florid. Um, I'd say it's a great book because it's not just a dry account of a boxing match. Um, although people who know more about boxing than me would say that the 30 pages or so, which is actually strictly about the actual fight itself with some of the best boxing writing of all time. Mailer knew his boxing, he was a boxer himself, an amateur boxer himself, and he curried, covered boxing for 30 odd years, so he did know what he was talking about. There's also a lot of other stuff in there, so there's a lot about the background to the fight. So the fight itself, Mailer along with a lot of other, uh, you know, the world's journalists and stuff went out there quite early to Kinshasa to cover this momentous fight. The fight got put back um, for several weeks at one point because George Foreman had a, um, a training injury. So he mailers there in Africa a long time, so there's lots of time for him to get to know the people involved. He gets to know some of Ali's entourage. He writes a lot about Africa, he writes about politics, he writes about himself, he writes about what it is to be a black man in America in the 1970s. You know, there's a, there's a lot which isn't just strictly about the boxing match. Now the boxing itself, it's become the, it, it's one of the most famous fights of all time. I, when I was rereading this book recently, I went onto YouTube and found some coverage, and some of the coverage is amazing. There's a documentary film that was uh, released in the 90s, which is also worth watching if you are interested. It's called When We Were Kings. Mailer turns up in that film. And when you see some of the, when you see the YouTube footage of the fight and the aftermath, it's a wonderful, you know, it's wonderful nostalgia really for the 70s. The fight itself was brutal. Now, George Foreman was where was the was the favourite. No one gave Ali a chance. By this point, Ali was 32. He'd kind of gone past his prime, possibly as a boxer. George Foreman was about 25. George Foreman was considered stronger, fitter. Um, he was unbeatable. He, he was a beast, you know, he was savage. No one gave Ali much of a chance. And the fight became famous for Ali's tactics of called rope-a-dope. Everyone expected Ali to dance like he, 
he'd done, he'd, he'd generally done. That was kind of his signature move, the dancing round the ring, you know. Float like a butterfly, sing like a bee. But in this fight, after the first round, Arlie went to the ropes and just let himself be hit by Foreman. That Arlie said, I knew Foreman would tire. I knew I could take his punches and eventually he will tire. And that's exactly what happened. When you watch the coverage, it's brutal. The amount of punches that Arlie's taking, it's just astonishing. But lo and behold, Arlie held out and in the eighth round, Foreman was tiring. He couldn't, he couldn't knock out Arlie and Arlie knocked out Foreman. So Arlie wins the match. I recommend anyone who likes boxing will, abs will probably have read it already and will love it. But if you like kind of sport, and literature this is a great book there's so much personality in there which i think you know like all these classic sports books it takes it above just a sort of dry documentary history or account of a sporting event norman mailer's the fight read it thank you